I hope you've all had a good day, are still having a good day. And as you can see from the theme on my screen, it's all about cherry blossoms because being in Aotearoa, New Zealand, it is actually our spring. So I thought I'll bring in some spring spring here for all of you that are heading into autumn um, or fall. Um, just to, to show you something that you can look forward to in about half a year, hopefully. So welcome everybody. I'm extremely excited to take you through some of the new features that we've just released for Mahara 22.10. And uh, the focus was on UX and internal changes. So that's why we have that second heading there. Um, I'm Christina Hoppner and the project lead for Mahara, um, also product manager and look after things in the community. And I'm very grateful to be working at Catalyst IT and being able to do all of that as my day job, not just work with clients, but also with um, the wider community and support all of you along with our development team that has been doing incredible work to get every release out and um, do lots of other things. So since we are focusing on the release um, the, today, there are quite a lot of people to thank. And if you look into the shared notes in Big Blue Button, you find the link to the short version of this talk where there are a couple of few uh, highlights in there because I wanted to keep something special for you. Um, and also the release notes where you can read all about the contributors who did not just provide new features or contribute sponsor new features, but who also made bug fixes. So we have a number of people again who contributed to this release from all over the world. And I'd like to thank all of them very much. Here on this slide um, are the organizations that contributed new features. And so we'd just like to thank Australian National University, uh, Central Queensland University, Inner Summit, Pharmacy Council here in New Zealand, Switch in Switzerland, and Te Whaturo Ora Waite Mata, um, also here in New Zealand. And of course, we at Catalyst IT also made a few new features and uh, contributed to um, a lot of the others because we have wonderful clients who allow us to open source work that we are doing for them. So now, at the beginning, I already briefly mentioned what our focus was for this release, and that is UX and internal changes. And usability changes are really, really important to us to make it continuously easier for people to work with Mahara um, and also to find their way around easily so that ideally they don't really need to consult the manual much or um, any extra videos to make it as intuitive as possible and also to um, adhere to accessibility guidelines and the like. The other change that we've made was really an internal coding change to which I will come later. So in this um, short session today, I will be taking you through some of the new features and changes that I would like to highlight to you because I think that they are either important for your learners and your staff and yourself as um, oftentimes learning designers. Oh, that are important for you as site administrators uh, to make your life easy as well, because we shouldn't just be looking at learners and um, other people using Mahara, but also support administrators. And then uh, there are also a couple of things that just relate to the code um, to make things running smoothly all the way in the background. So let's get started with some of the usability features that I can show you live. All right, here we've got a brand new Mahara 22.10. And one thing you, will, you might already notice if you've been using Mahara for a while and are familiar with all the icons, that the icons have changed slightly. So we are now actually using Font Awesome 6, um, the latest version of Font Awesome. And therefore, 
the icons icons have changed slightly we, we are actually also also using a few new icons that are more appropriate and convey things more easily but of course since Mahara is open source if you don't like one of those icons and would like to use a different one in particular from Font Awesome it is pretty easy to change that in your code and choose a different icon if you'd like to use a completely different icon set, that would be a bit trickier to do, but is certainly also a possibility. Now, let's go to our uh, portfolios. And another new change that you can see is that we are calling the section where all your portfolios are now portfolios. We are not calling uh, calling that section pages and collections anymore, but as we had already started in the groups, we are calling it portfolios to make it a bit shorter um, and also to indicate that we are talking about portfolios. We still, of course, have pages and collections so that you can organize your portfolios and either make a small one, which is just a page, or bundle a number of pages together to, um, into a collection to organize your content, structure it, and guide um, your viewers through a larger portfolio. So that is mainly a wording change throughout the entire platform. And um, yeah, also has received a new icon there. But now let's go to the usability changes. And actually, I'll take one step back and uh, start with the files. So, as I mentioned, usability and accessibility are really important to us. And um, what we wanted to make sure is that for accessibility reasons, you should always be able to add alt text um, and or a caption. And I'm in the wrong folder and just upload a file and therefore it should be possible to um, add that extra information in and what we have done to that effect is that you can now decide whether your image is decorative or not and most of the images to be fair will not be decorative so they are not just background niceness, but they actually convey meaning. And that's why the decorative image um, switch is set to no. But if you were to upload an image that you really just want to use, say, as a border or as a background and a person who cannot perceive images, who is blind, for example, just uses the screen reader, they will not be informed about that if the, me if the image is not necessary for the content. By flipping the switch to yes, your alt text will automatically be empty so that a screen reader skips it when it reads through the page. Now, if your image actually does convey content, you can add alt text um, and you can also add a separate caption because there is a difference between alt text and captions. Alt text should describe the image, what you can see there, whereas a caption um, might convey more of the, the feeling that you have in there or um, might also add a person's name, whereas for the description of an image, a person's name might not always be necessary. So you can have those two different uh, set separately so that they are also being used separately when you embed the image or when you use it in an image block. However, if the alt text is also the caption, then you can simply say that you use the alt text for both and Mahara will work out when to show the alt text and when not when to show the caption and have an empty alt text if um, you do display the caption on a page. So this is only possible for images um, because they require alt text. Other files have their normal description. And so I'll just leave it here with my airplane. And so what I can now do is go to my normal portfolio and um, then work with the files. However, now let's t sh let me t show you a few more uh, usability um, improvements. 
And one of them is that we have that quick edit option and we'll come back to the image shortly. And you can get into that quick edit option by clicking the details button. Now, that option is really nice, I find, um, because your learners don't go into full edit mode and therefore won't accidentally move blocks around or add blocks extra, but they can just focus on the content. So especially if you're working with a template, that might be a really good idea to focus them on the on the detail section, the quick edit option, for them to um, quickly make changes without actually changing anything on the structure. So we've had this functionality already for a while for the text blocks. And now we've been able to expand that also to PDFs, um, file blocks, and then also for the course completion block, if you want to show completions from Totara, for example. So what I can now do directly on the files block is um, I can then pick my images or also any other files. And again, don't need to go into full edit mode. I'm not seeing all of the other icons and the, the structure of the page, but have a cleaner page. And the nice thing about this details block or the, the quick edit functionality is that it is sticky. So when you refresh the page, the quick edit will still be there. Um, so also when you log out and log back in, it'll be there. You'll also see it when you are on other people's pages and um, therefore have quick access to the feedback and details that are also displayed in this block when it is possible to make comments on them. And so the same works also for the PDF. If I had a PDF, I would be able to attach it directly here and can then um, make any changes without needing to worry about um, moving blocks around, which in particular I find is quite nice also when you work on a mobile device because their touch um, can sometimes be a bit tricky. And so now here we have our airplane and um, when I look at it, I can immediately also see the alt text that is mentioned here. Since I didn't put a caption in, it is not mentioned. And when I um, use the image directly, I will also have the alt text available. Another feature that <laughs> new usability feature that you can see directly on this page as well is the, uh, the sign off block. So we are using the sign off block with the portfolio completion functionality. And there used to be just a little red dot on the page. And um, through testing with organizations that use this functionality quite extensively, um, they realized that sometimes um, the learners didn't quite know whether they could click it or not click it because it was just an icon. And so what we've done is we changed that to actually be a switch so that it is more apparent that you can interact with it. And the same would also appear for the verifier. On the portfolio completion page itself, we've actually left the icons because there it is a slightly different interaction and more also of an overview um, in order to see the status of the pages. But on the page themselves, um, we do work with the switches. And as you can see, there's now also some help text right below. And when you um, sign off the page, it does disappear. Um, and there is also the um, help icon, which then adds more details also once the page is verified. So these are some of our accessibility and usability changes. There are a few other small ones. Um, but that is kind of something that we look forward to always doing in every release of Mahara in order to make things increasingly easier for people to use. Now I've just talked about the portfolio completion functionality and a somewhat similar functionality is Smart Evidence, um, where you can track your competencies 
and also see where students are at. What we haven't had yet is actually an overview over a number of students and where they are at with their smart evidence collections. And that was always something that we had wanted to put into Mahara. Um, and therefore, we are really happy that there is now an initial report that makes it possible for you to just get a really quick overview of how complete portfolios are. And so this report is available to site and institution administrators as smart evidence report. And now I'm just going to pick some time um, when I know that there's some data in there. And you can also decide which extra columns you want to display um, of the information that is available. And if you're using Smart Evidence on your site, you will then get an overview of um, all the Smart Evidence collections that are on the site. If they are linked, you do have access to them. If they are not linked, you don't have access to them, but you do see who has access to them. And on the right-hand side, you can see all the statuses that we have available in Smart Evidence in order to quickly see um, where the portfolios are at, how many students have already uh, completed things, where, where are still items outstanding so that you could get in touch with the tutor, for example, and ask them to, um, to do the assessment. And of course, like with any other report, you can download that as CSV file at the bottom of the page and then also um, track things more on your own um, from time to time, because of course, this report here is a snapshot of what it looks like in this case right now. And that is a wonderful functionality uh, that we can see. It is also possible for you now, if you go to Smart Evidence itself, to see a summary of the statuses. In this case, I'm only displaying the, the achieved one, so has met the standard, but you can also see the sum of statuses for any of the others if they are, if you so choose to display them. And so that is the information then that is fed into the reports. Now, there are a couple of features that are not so easy to show to you. Um, and that's why I'm just going to talk about them. And that is that um, often site administrators do need to perform functionalities in bulk, um, like moving people or exporting people. And um, on the interface, that is not always that easy because you kind of first need to select the people or you know, need to know their usernames. And that's why we have two new functionalities available. One is that accounts can now be exported via the command line. That does require that you have server access, so it might need to be something your system administrator does for you. Um, but it's certainly faster than trying to do that via the interface because it can just run in the background. And you have a number of options available in terms of um, which accounts you want to export and so on. The other thing that we've um, also know does happen from time to time is that uh, organizations want to move accounts from one institution to another on their own Mahara site. For example, once students graduate and they want to then um, move them into an alumni institution. And um, that is now possible via CSV so that you don't have to ask your students to move their accounts or um, ask them to invite themselves or you invite them into the other institution. So it's very much streamlined. And those are two functionalities. The, the last one with the CSV file you can do in the site administration area, the other one on the servers. There 
is a question. So let's just briefly go back to smart evidence. Um, can smart evidence report be limited to a particular group? Yes, it can. Um, the same way that you can limit reports to just a number of people. Um, so for example, if I just want to know, well, what has Paula been up to? I can search for her name. And in this case, because the, the search in the administration area is limited to institutions, we can't search for a group that you have set up on Mahara. But right now I'm interpreting group of people as a number of people. So you can select a particular name. Um, one trick though is if you have people on different pages, you can actually select a person here and then navigate to the second page and select another person and both of them will be selected. So you don't have to go page by page. All you need to ensure though is that you're not changing any search criteria um, and that you're using the, the paginator to page through. Um, but yes, you can select on that screen, select multiple people um, even if they are on different screens. So now I have my two people selected and I can run any report over them and limit it to just these two people. So in this case, I'm going through the same motions again um, to widen my search um, for which portfolios I'm caring about, just so that we can make sure we have one in there in my test data. And then I don't have a report. I thought Paula had a summary, but uh, must have misread that, or we'll need to look into that a bit further. But theoretically and practically, you should be able to limit it to just two people. So I'll need to check what is going on because I thought I was early enough. But let me just try one last thing. No, nope. um, so I need to look into that. What is going on? Why it's not showing the statistics when I just have um, one person selected because Paula definitely has a portfolio here. So thank you for pointing that out, Jonathan, uh, to give me something to test. But yes, this, that is, um, how the, how the other, um, reports work that you can limit who can, um, who you are reporting over. And um, therefore, don't always have to see all the people that are on your instance, especially when you have a few on there, can be quite cumbersome. And we'll just figure out what is going on with this report. Okay, so that now really takes me to the internal changes that we are making. As you know, Mahara has been around for a while now. And uh, that means that, of course, there is quite a bit of code in there that sometimes even still goes back to 2006. And uh, since then, though, the world has moved on, including PHP, the programming language in which Mahara is written uh, for the most part. And that means that we need to upgrade and we need to be compatible with PHP 8.1 because PHP 7.4 is falling out of, so that is the latest uh, PHP 7 version, is falling out of support this November. However, um, many distributions like Ubuntu or Debian or Red Hat will support PHP 7.4 for a little while still because um, if you're using a long-term um, service or long-term support release, then um, that version of PHP will still be in there. Um, but what we of course want to make sure is that people can also work with the uh, new version of PHP. That's why we are looking into supporting PHP 8.1 and we have made good progress over the last um, three quarters of a year, roughly, and have a base implementation that is experimental and therefore invite all of you who have a friendly IT team to 
see if they want to upgrade a test server or a development server and hand it over for you to testing and see if you're running into any problems. Um, because while we do our own testing, it is always good for other people to do testing as well, uh, because you know better how your students and staff are using Mahara and therefore might find um, things that we hadn't been looking out for yet. We are certainly continuing with um, that PHP 8.1 support and make more updates because eventually the goal is that we can use new PHP 8.1 functionality, which will allow us to make use of new features that the language offers. Um, but at the moment, because a lot of people are still on PHP 7.4 or sometimes even lower, the, um, our goal is to be able to use either PHP 7.4 or 8.1 um, and that is our minimum uh, step that we can get to so that people don't immediately have to upgrade to 8.1 but of course over the next year um, we will move towards only supporting PHP 8.1 because then also the operating system distributions will be offering PHP 8.1 uh, as default and it will not be so good to stay on PHP 7. Um, that is a massive job for, for the developers because, of course, PHP is most of the code in the system and there have been some huge changes in the language um, and therefore a lot of background work is going on. And that's why also part of that is that we don't have huge new features um, like we we of, um, like we often have in releases because we do need to focus our energy quite a bit on maintaining uh, the code base and making sure that we also make those more technical changes that are not really seen by others because they they are important and ensure that the, uh, the environment is also on modern code and does not um, expose you to security issues that might be in the languages. So please bear with us um, and we'd certainly appreciate um, anybody who can test uh, not just the PHP 8.1 update, which means uh, testing the entire environment um, running on uh, running on an operating system that uses PHP 8.1, but also any other testing. If you want to get involved, um, please do get in touch, and we'll certainly see how you can do that, um, and um, also see if you can do that on your own instances to be more self-sufficient. Now, these were just some of the highlights from this new release. Um, there are a few other smaller features that you can check out and also, of course, numerous uh, bug fixes, smaller and bigger, depending on um, what, what we had found during testing. And so you're very welcome to check those out um, on our bug and feature tracker as well as also actually find the link in the release notes to which I put the link into the shared notes. The Mahada manual um, is partially updated. Uh, I'm still working um, through all of the features and um, other changes that need to be documented. So please bear with me. Um, I hope to get this done within the next month. Um, but yeah, rudimentary, um, for the rudimentary version for 22.10 is already there so that if you do install it um, then the links to the help files will be available for that version. And now of course as usual you can download Mahara and install it on your own servers if you're not supported by, um, by a company such as uh, Catalyst and ask your IT team to download it. Um, we do offer both the zip file download as well as Git. Um, if your IT team is comfortable with Git, we would certainly recommend using that uh, because that makes 
tracking of changes or also any customizations you might want to put into your Mahara instance much, much easier. And you're very welcome to, to give it a go. Like always, we recommend you first install it on the testing environment before applying it to production so that you can also give your staff um, and yourself some time to familiarize yourself with changes, see if any of your own documentation needs to be updated, um, and also make sure that everything is running smoothly first before you go to production. Now in the announcement for this webinar, I did promise you an outlook into Mahara 2304, um, which I think is the first time that I'm doing that. And that is partly because I'm really excited since we already know what we will be working on for the next, um, next few months, besides a number of the technical changes. And um, I do want to share this new feature that um, we have sponsoring for because I find it is going to be an exciting one for a lot of you. And you can find the link also in the shared notes directly. And so the, the feature proposal that we have is for what we are going to call outcomes portfolio. Um, it is for an organization. And like always, um, we are making a first implementation um, and then things can change on top of that. If somebody else wants to take it further, wants to add some more functionality. And this is kind of our current scope of the project. And it is for an organization in the UK who work with a diverse set of students who um, have so-called educational, oh, educational health care plans. Um, so where they get additional assistance um, in order to accomplish everyday life tasks. So for example, take the bus or um, counting money to, um, for a bus ticket, finding out where the bus route is going and things like that. And um, so those portfolios that the students then create in order to put their evidence in and also reflect on what they have been doing, um, is a portfolio that, or for which they can also receive assistance from their tutors or their um, healthcare team. And therefore, it needs to be possible for them to create portfolios together. So you think, well, hmm, that's nothing new. Mahara can do that. We have the groups. Yes, we do. Um, However, what we don't yet have is for somebody to set up such a plan, to set up outcomes for students uh, to work on. And of course, what we are also wanting to do is um, make it so that the students can't change their outcomes. Because right now, if you have access to a group portfolio that you can edit, you can make all sorts of changes. Therefore, what we are looking into is changing Mahara so that you are also more guided through the portfolio creation process and um, have or have permission changes and also make it possible to again have some more usability improvements. And so you can read all of that yourself um, on the wiki page, but I'd just briefly like to take you through it. Um, so if, say, the um, a support staff member now sets up the portfolio for, uh, for a student, they would normally kind of set up a collection and then say that it is an outcome portfolio, flip the switch to outcome portfolio. And then on the next page, they would be able to input the outcomes. So you're not going outside of the collection, you're staying within the collection in order to set up more of that structure. So you can give it a short title, a full title, select an outcomes category, and add more than one outcome, all in one, so that you can edit more. And so what that produces is then a page 
that does look somewhat like the portfolio completion page. And we certainly um, are going to reuse things from that functionality, only that we now will have two layers. So here we'll have the outcome, in this case, for example, tell time or literacy and numeracy skills that you can sign off as a tutor or administrator. And within each of those outcomes, you have activities that need to be completed for one of those outcomes, and you can track which activities have been completed. And these activities are our normal Mahara pages. And the cool thing is that we are going to try this new functionality where instead of needing to set up the pages first and then adding them to the collection, you can actually immediately add a page to the collection by clicking that button. The page will be set up directly within that outcome as um, with and, and appear within that list of activities. And then there are some additional items that are being displayed by default because they need to be displayed and can then be um, edited directly by the people who should have the, the editing permissions. So you can see we are using this functionality to make to make Mahara usability improvements in one particular area so that we can then also trial that. And because it is important for the organization to have a very clear path and smooth pathway through setting up these portfolios um, and have things as streamlined as possible. So it is fantastic that we get the opportunity to work with them um, in order to, to help students um, accomplish their goals. And so now this page shows when um, an outcome is completed. So there will be the indicators for the overall outcome and then also for the individual page outcomes. And um, once an outcome has been completed, you won't be able to update any of the supporting text. Now, this is one part of the functionality, and there are a few more screenshots for what a student sees, what a staff member sees, so please take some time to take a look at that. Um, there, But there is way more to it, because once you're actually on a page, you then, so in this case, we are calling it a activity page infrastructure. So once you're on a page, there are also a number of things that you can set up so that they appear at the top of the page. So once somebody clicked Add Activity, which essentially creates a new Mahara page, the administrator or tutor gets goes to the normal screen where they can enter the title, the page description, but also in addition now the activity. So really say what the student actually needs to do. They can select a subject that has been set up in the database. Um, they can also say who is responsible um, to track this activity from the tutors or administrators that are set up in the group, uh, start date, end date, and then there are four levels of achievement. And so what that then looks like when you are on a page is that all of that information is displayed at the top of the screen and can be collapsed um, so that you don't always see it if you don't need it. But automatically the information is um, displayed. It pulls through to which outcome it belongs, what the outcome type is, and then we have the sign-off switch just renamed into Achieved um, with the, the switch there. And you pull all that information that you've put into the um, activity page through to here to make it available and, for example, then also prevent the student from editing that information. So a student wouldn't be able to go to the settings page. They would only be able to edit the page, um, add blocks or um, also remove blocks. But this one is always there. And then the third component of the functionality is that there will be a new block type 
um, which we are calling checkpoint, um, that you can put onto a page um, and have a short conversation around um, what has been achieved already for a particular activity. Again, so that you can sign it off or you can, in this case, give it an achievement level. So that's why you put the achievement levels in before and uh, can make some notes, um, things that you've learned or things that you've seen or if the uh, tutor wants to say anything. And then um, below or also next to it, you can then add your regular evidence and also your reflections. And the other um, wireframes that you see here just show the page how it's viewed either by a group tutor or by a group admin, by, by a learner, uh, what it looks like when you are in edit mode, what it looks like when you're just viewing it, when it's completed, when it's not completed and so on. Um, so definitely a lot of screens to go through, but if you're interested, please have a look and let me know what you think. Or if you'd like to take it uh, further at some point, um, or also see if you want to contribute to the functionality in which that will be. So we are planning on making all of that functionality available um, in the April version next year. And then, yeah, I'd love to know whether that is something you might be interested in, and then also see if you want to use it. So far, I've seen a yes from Sam, which is fantastic, and also enter. And so there are only a couple more things to say for me for right now before opening it up for, for a conversation. And that is, you might, I hope you've already seen uh, on social media and also in the forums that we now have a podcast. It is called Create, Share, Engage. Um, like our three main action words that we are using in Mahara itself. It comes out every other week. Um, so we've had our third episode last Wednesday with Misty Kirby, um, who worked for several years in Australia, is now um, in the States and is working for schools rather than for uh, universities and has been using portfolios in many different contexts. So um, you can check her out episode out along also with um, the two prior episodes uh, where I interviewed Lisa and Orna, um, both from DCU. Lisa now left DCU as at a different organizations, but they are talking about the DCU journey, Dublin City University's journey. And next week um, will be the episode with Teresa McKinnon, who is now retired and you worked for many, many years at the University of Warwick. So every other week, a new episode is available um, that you can find on all the major podcasts, apps and networks and also under podcast.mahara.org, where you can listen directly on the website um, if you don't have a podcast app. And of course, if you'd like to be involved, please do send me an email um, and we can see when it might be possible to, to interview you about your experiences with portfolios, what your organization is doing or whatever else you'd like to share on your portfolio story. So here you've got my contact information on various networks. And uh, yeah, I'd love to share your story because the uh, the important thing of why I um, set up the podcast is is that we can share our stories from the community, be that directly our Bahada community or also the wider ePortfolio community, um, because I find it's a wonderful way to hear directly from the people that are involved in using portfolios and hear what they are doing, what they'd like to be able to do, and also what tips they have for others to work with portfolios, implement portfolios, or create portfolios. And that is it for me for today. 
if you'd like to grab the microphone or put something into the chat, if you have any questions or comments, um, now would be the time to um, answer them or to, to talk them through. <laughs>